when I first moved to this area, I started walking around up and down the hills, which are pretty severe around here, uh, and that was a challenge. And I was getting a lot of, of the wheezing, particularly, uh, that I could hear when I was breathing. At the time, I thought it was allergies. The whole view of asthma has changed over the last 10 years. I think it used to be sort of pigeonholed, as it were, as, as this somewhat easy disease that many, many people had. It all was started in childhood and you know, was generally allergy related. And I think we understand now that it covers a wide spectrum of, of patients, some of whom fit that bill, of course, who have very mild disease and allergy and, and, and so on and have had it their whole life. But also encompasses a huge range of, of patients from mild to severe where allergy isn't part of their disease at, at any level, uh, got their disease in adulthood, can have very severe debilitating disease, life-changing disease. Asthma is certainly a condition that is really on the rise, uh, both in the United States and throughout the developed world. Um, we've seen an increase in prevalence of, uh, from about 6.5% in the early 2000s up to now about 85 maybe close to 9% um, in the most recent numbers, which I think are from 2014 or 2016 uh, in that range. So over that 10-year period, we've seen a pretty significant increase, um, especially in urban areas and inner city areas. No one truly understands exactly why asthma is increasing in prevalence. Uh, it may have to do with increasing diagnosis of the disease, increasing awareness of, of the disease. It may have to do with environmental factors. It may even have to do with overdiagnosing of the disease in, in patients that actually don't have the disease but have something else that ends up being called asthma. It's been recognized for a long time that not, not all asthma is the same. Uh, and earlier on from really the earliest descriptions of asthma, there's this idea of extrinsic versus intrinsic asthma, that some people have asthma that seems to be provoked by their environment, and other people seem to have asthma that's just there all the time. Now really this is a very heterogeneous disease that likely has different underlying molecular pathways, different types of inflammation, and is likely to respond to different therapies. And we don't really understand why some people get asthma in adulthood as opposed to getting it in, in childhood. Asthma in adulthood is, can be very different. Um, it can be related to the fact, oh, maybe you, maybe you smoked and that maybe triggered something off. Um, maybe you actually had a viral exposure of some sort or other that changed your immune system in some certain ways and maybe even started to kick up problems in your nose and your sinuses. Also patients who have other uh, comorbidities or diseases that run you know, similarly with asthma, chronic rhinosinusitis, uh, acid reflux, uh, nasal polyps, um, and other allergic diseases, um, those all sort of increase the chance that someone's going to have a more severe uh, asthma or require more medication to keep their asthma controlled. What we do understand or are beginning to understand is that if you get asthma in adulthood, typically you are going to have a more severe disease than if you've developed asthma in childhood. It's really important I look for any nasal polyps. You don't see any. It was getting so bad that I actually told my wife, I think we're moving back to Florida, and I said, I know the air will be fresher and I probably will not get whatever is irritating me here. Looks pretty clear. Are you having much post-nasal drip? I'm having a little more than I had. I think it's seasonal. Had. I had just gotten two new puppies when our older dog died, uh, and we ended up gifting them to family members because I didn't think we could keep them here. Uh, and I altered a lot of my activities. I cut down a lot on exercising and outdoor activities. I used to walk all around the hills here and do a lot of other things. Patients will put up with many, many symptoms and interruption in their life, um, more so than I ever imagined. People li live in a very symptomatic day in, in many cases because doctors are telling them um, that, oh, you know, take this medicine or take that medicine and it doesn't work and the doctor knows what they're doing, so I should be getting better. And even patients that get their disease in adulthood will get it typically when they're in their 20s and 30s, in the middle of their most productive 
period of their life. And it can have a huge impact on lowering their trajectory uh, for success because now they're not able to perform at the, at the level that they, that they once did. My 30s and 40s, I started developing allergies and which were not identified as anything specific. I was tested for allergies and had some uh, allergy shots for a little while, took over the counter medicines and was tested for a number of, of things, including GERD and, and uh, any kind of gastrointestinal problems, which were all negative. For years, patients can actually uh, go untreated or un inappropriately treated because it's not recognized that, in, in fact, they are having more than uh, a stuffy nose and some post-nasal drip. They actually do have asthma-related problems. Um, they do have asthma that doesn't respond in the traditional way to bronchodilators and inhaled corticosteroids. And so getting the either the appropriate test or the appropriate diagnosis or the appropriate referral um, to a specialist, I think, in, in these cases is really important. Join us for the next episode when specialists discuss critical factors in the differential diagnosis of asthma.